Good morning. Wow, what a turnout. This is uh, very, very encouraging. This is uh, about three times as many people as we had last week, I think. Let me uh, turn my mic on here. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. All right, here we are. I'm back. Woo! Two Sundays in a row. You guys are stuck with me. So, uh, now Janice is still in quarantine, but he will be back next week, um, assuming everything goes well. Otherwise, Nate will probably be up here preaching. So, you know, we'll see what happens. But uh, no, I'm excited to to be back up here this morning, guys. Excited to see everyone this morning. Uh, I do have several announcements that I need to go through. So we're going to take care of some business stuff, and then we'll get into the word. Amen. Uh, So the first thing is the registration for the Stronger Conference is now open at stronger2020.live. It's going to be an all-day conference on Saturday, October the 24th, and it'll be uh, our time zone. It'll be 9 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. So it's going to be lots of classes. There's going to be a general session. There's going to be breakout classes. Uh, So if that's something that interests you or something that you want to be a part of, Go to stronger2020.live to register. And I think the registration prices and everything is on the website, so you can find that there. And they also have early bird registration. So uh, feel free to check that out. I think we'll also have a video at the end of service with some more information on that. So that's that. Uh, Like Jacob mentioned, next Sunday, October 11th, will be our special missions contribution. Uh, and to celebrate that, the church is actually putting on a, a, an outdoor bonfire, s'more, campfire kind of thing. Uh, so it's going to be a fun time for us to get together, to hang out, have some fun, eat some s'mores. Uh, I don't really care for s'mores, but I love the fellowship, and I love fire, so I will be there. Uh, but it's actually going to be split up over two evenings, so Saturday evening and Sunday evening. Um, we're going to have to split the group up to, to stay safe and to abide by the law. Um, so we'll have on Saturday evening, it'll be the Abellios, Jobs, and Newbies family groups. That will be there at 6 p.m. out there in the back. And then on Sunday, if you're in the Herbals or Eppingers group, you'll be out there at 6 p.m. So it should be a good time. We wish we could all be together, but... Uh, just isn't going to work out that way, unfortunately, but hopefully soon we can all be back together. Um, on top of that, we have some people visiting in town. The Ristmans are in town. It's uh, always good to see them. Uh, they are near and dear to my, my wife and I's hearts. They've invested in us and prayed for us and supported us uh, from our time in campus ministry and even to our transition into youth and family. So we love them. We love their kids. Uh, And, you know, Jacob's dating now, so I'm sure they're excited to be here and celebrate that. And uh, Katrina's here, so that's awesome. (laughs) Louis' bride-to-be is here, and uh, they're going to be getting married soon. So it's, you know, so anyway, we're excited for that and uh, praying for you guys. Katrina, welcome to the family. Welcome to Columbia. uh, We're glad to have you here. And I now have a photo that I want to show. You guys probably know what this is, yeah? That's a baby in the womb. Whose baby is the question? The answer, I like the suspense. That's baby Sneller. So, yeah. Derek's gonna be a daddy. Ashley's going to be a mama. They are pregnant, and the due date is April 9th? April 9th. So, yeah, it's exciting news. We're going to have another baby, another addition to the family here in Columbia. So uh, really, really excited and happy uh, to be able to share that good news with everyone, and really excited for Derek and Ashley to be parents. They're going to be great parents. So really looking forward to that. So, uh, well, let's go ahead and say a prayer, and then we'll dive right into the Word. God, thank you so much for this morning. Thank you for uh, this time to come together. God, thank you for the opportunity to meet together. God, even though we we can't all be together and uh, we we can't all worship together right now, I'm I'm grateful that we can still have some type of uh, reflection of normalcy with with being able to have people at the building uh, God, I just pray that we can give you our whole hearts this morning. I pray that uh, your, your word moves our hearts. I, I pray that you 
Inspire us, Father, with your word. I pray that you convict us. I, I pray that you help us to draw nearer to you. And uh, just so grateful, grateful for you. We're grateful for your love and uh, grateful for this opportunity to meet together and to worship together as a family. It's in your son's name I pray all these things. Amen. 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 So you guys can turn over in your Bibles to Luke chapter 17. And we'll be looking at uh, verses 11 through 19. And, you know, I've been praying. I was praying this last week, just asking for the spirit to move in my heart. And, uh, you know, what what he wanted me to preach on and uh, gratitude came up. And so we're going to we're going we're gonna to talk about gratitude this morning. And one of the things I've been noticing in my own character is uh, I'm, I'm selfish by nature anyway, but uh, this pandemic has really exposed my lack of gratitude. Uh, by default, I am a complainer. Uh, I can, I don't know, I, I guess I could say I'm somewhat pessimistic. I tend to see more of the, the negative side of things uh, rather than the positive side of things. And even if everything's going well, I can be like, oh, man, something's going to go wrong or like, Oh, like this one little issue becomes this whole big deal. And it's just, it makes it really hard for me to be grateful. And so when you put, you know, a pandemic in combination with that, it's just like, I feel like I'm complaining all the time. Um, You know, complaining about things in my home, complaining about my son, complaining about this, complaining about that, and just just not really having a lot of gratitude uh, for what God has done, even in the midst of a pandemic. And so I, I felt convicted by the Spirit to, to share about that this morning. So this will just kind of be more of a me sharing some of the convictions that the Holy Spirit has helped me to come to over this last week. So um, let's look here in Luke chapter 17. Title of the message this morning is A Lot with a Little Gratitude. God can do a lot with a little. He can certainly do a lot with a little bit of gratitude. So Luke chapter 17, verse 11, it says, Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice, He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. So we'll stop right there. You know, two quick things this morning that I want to focus on, two quick convictions that I've come to uh, realize over the last week is that a little bit of gratitude, number one, helps us to remember God's goodness. So, you know, Jesus is traveling between the the border town. He's on the border of Samaria and Galilee. Uh, The Samaritans were kind of like the outcasts. Uh, Some Jews called them dogs. Jesus at one point called one of them a dog, not in an offensive way, but just to kind of illustrate the scenario there. But, you know, they they were the outcasts of society. But you also had some Jews who were kind of mixed into this group of 10, right, of of 10 lepers. And uh, leprosy was, you know, it it, it was a skin defiling disease, uh, one that God deemed as impure. And if you had this disease, you were to basically quarantine yourself. Uh, You know, so they kind of knew, I guess, to some degree what we're going through now, uh, maybe a little bit more extreme because they had to like go and live in a separate city for lepers. Um, But they 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 couldn't be around society. You know, even if they had family or or their friends or people that they were close to, if they had leprosy in order to maintain and uphold the law that came from God, they had to be separate. And so you can kind of imagine the. The, the, the desperation that they felt, right? As they cry out to Jesus, like, Jesus, have mercy on us, heal us, like, we, we want to be well. And that's just kind of the scenario that they were in because of their skin disease. And Jesus replies to their request. He answers their request. And he says, go and, and show yourselves to the priests. Uh, and it, it was customary for people who had leprosy to first go to a priest and have the priest confirm that it was okay for them to re-enter society. So they couldn't just, oh, I'm clean, like I can just go back. It's like, no, they had to go to a priest. The priest had to say, okay, you're good, you're clear to go, right? It wasn't like a two-week quarantine kind of thing, and then it's like, all right, two weeks is up, I'm done. But uh, so that, that was the scenario. And so as they're going, they're cleansed on the way, all 10 of them. But only one comes back. One realizes what happens, right? I mean, I'm sure they all realize what happens, right? Their skin is clean, so they're all probably excited, but only one of them remembers who it was that healed him. Only one of them remembers that 
man, I, this, this wasn't me. Like, I, I got to go back and I got to say thank you. But the other nine, I guess they forgot or, or perhaps they, you know, were just so consumed with the blessing that they forgot about who gave it to them. And so as a result, they don't come back and give thanks. Nine people healed of what is probably one of the worst diseases a person could have. And they don't remember to go back and, and show some gratitude. And I felt so convicted by this, right? Because how often does God do something so good for us? And then we just kind of for, we just forget. We forget about who it is that does the blessing. We forget about God's goodness. It's, I, w- I was so convicted. You know, I, I think, you know, it's easy to, to focus on the one that came back, and he's like, oh, he gave thanks. And, but I was convicted by the other nine, because I was like, man, I feel like if I was in that situation, I might have been one of the other nine. You know, and amen, you know, the, the disease was healed. It's awesome. There's such good news. Like, God is good, but what does it mean if we don't remember that God is good? Gratitude helps us to remember that God is good. Gratitude helps us to remember that we're not good, right? Yeah. That, that we, are, we are in a situation, we're in a position where we can't take care of ourselves. We can't heal ourselves. We can't get rid of our sin. We can't earn our way into heaven. And so we have to be grateful, right? We, we, we have to remember that God is good. He's graciously given us all these things. I, I get it, right? It's, it's hard to be grateful when things are hard. Yeah. It's, just, it's just naturally harder. Being in a pandemic, you know, I, 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 I relate to what Sean was sharing. It's frustrating when you can't do the things that you want to do because of a pandemic. One of the things I love to do is uh, play ultimate Frisbee, and I haven't gotten to do it in about seven months up until yesterday. And then even still... Because of the pandemic, we didn't have a ton of people out there. It was just four of us. And, you know, we showed up. We're like, I want to play some some two-on-two Frisbee. We're going to get it in. We're going to do what we can. And I I was on the ground wheezing, begging for a timeout, playing with all these people who, like, work at Wilson's Fitness and do CrossFit. And I'm out there, you know, I'm like, man, uh," they're like, what do you do? I'm like, well, I'm a minister and I have a kid. And so I'm not really active. You know, but <laughs> no, I'm, I'm anti-dad bod. I'm, I'm trying not to get there, but yeah, that's why I got out there. But, but you know, I, I think about all the, all the time prior to that. I just, I, when, I, when I'm not able to do what I want to do, I just get ugh, I'm frustrated, right? It's hard for me to feel grateful about this pandemic. But I think when I, when I find myself leaning into that, I start to forget about how good God is. I start to forget about all of the things that he's done since quarantine even started. All the people that have made Jesus Lord. I think about Mason, I think about Vashon, and you know, all the people who've gotten baptized this year, Carrie Marsh. Like God's done so many great things, right? The, the, the Spradlings got to, to see their baby girl enter the world, and it's just, there's so much good going on. But when, we, when, we, when we're not grateful, we lose sight of that. We can only focus on the negative, right? We can only focus on the bad. And that's what gratitude does. It, it pulls us out of that mentality. It pulls us out of that space and helps us to see, man, God is so, so, so good, right? He, he, he heals us. He is still capable. He's still in control. No pandemic, no racial injustice, you know, no imperfections, no sin will prevent God from being good. And so I, I think I, I just, I, I wanted to share, I feel convicted. I, I feel challenged to be more grateful and to, to think more about the things that God has done for me. You know, my son, uh, he's the cutest thing, and uh, he just started crawling after months and months of trying to, to get him to start crawling. Uh, last Tuesday, he was bear crawling like a Navy SEAL on the floor, and you can kind of see the strain and the excitement in his eyes. He's like, Ugh, trying to get to something he shouldn't be touching. Um, and then two days later, he's on his hands and knees crawling. And so, you know, he, he's, he's just so excited. I, I love him so much. And 
You know, I think I, there's times where I wrestle with my son because I feel like he's ungrateful. I mean, he's a 10 month old, he's a baby. <laughs> But I, I still feel like he's ungrateful, right? So he, he can be pretty demanding, as children usually are. And, you know, he'll want something, and he's like, eh, eh, or whatever, and like trying to struggle to get to something, and then I give it to him, and then he's like, yay, he's excited, and then he just throws it down. You know, he's like, I'm done with this, and then he's like fussing over the next thing that he's trying to get. And I'm like, dude, I just, you, you're so ungrateful. Like, I, you couldn't even get to the toy, and I just gave it to you. And, and now you're just like, dad, next thing now. I want the next thing. Yeah. I'm like, bro, come on. Like, like show a little bit of appreciation here, right? But I, I, I think that's, that's how we can be with God, yeah. right? And so I, I imagine that, that God looks at us the same way I look at my son, the same way those of you who have had kids probably relate, right? God looks at us the same way, and we can be that way, right? God blesses us. He does something incredible, and then we're just like, eh, on to the next thing, right? I want this, I want that. Just completely forgetting about how good God is, completely forgetting about the blessings that he showed us. I think if, if we want to make it through this pandemic, you know, if we want to make it through life, all the hardships, all the challenges that we're going to face, we got to get in the habit of being grateful. A little bit of gratitude goes a long way. It takes our focus off of the negative puts it on the positive, and helps us to push through. Let's keep reading here. Luke chapter 17. We'll pick it up in verse 17. And it says, Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go, your faith has made you well. Second point here this morning is a little bit of gratitude restores our relationship with God. Jesus is kind of surprised at this situation. He sees one person come back. He's like, where, where are the rest? Didn't I, didn't I heal all 10 of you? Because this guy shows gratitude, Jesus says to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. I think that, uh, you know, Jesus makes a point here that there's, an, there's a, an inseparable link between gratitude and faith. The two are connected. He says, your faith has made you well. Right? Obviously, this guy is, he, he's, he's, on his, he's at Jesus' feet on his face, praising God, saying thank you. And Jesus says, that's, that's great faith right there. And you're made well because of it. I think... There's something really restorative when it comes to gratitude. It just, it just does something to you. It, 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 it's, it's healing in a way. When we're able to stop and just be grateful and just think about how good God is and think about all the good that he's done, it, it does something in our hearts. It's hard to do. I'm not saying it's always easy, right? It's easy to be grateful when things are good. Sometimes even then, it's hard to be grateful. But... There's something healing and restorative about gratitude. And this guy that's at Jesus' feet, praising God, gets to, he, he gets somewhat of an extra healing, right? He, he gets healed of his outer disease of leprosy, but Jesus says, Bro, your faith has made you well. You've been made well. And what I, what I take that to mean after, like, you know, reading commentaries and, and studying this out is I, I think this guy was made well with God. It's like, you're not just healed of this affliction. You, you're, you're in a good place with God right now because of your faith, because of your gratitude. And that's something that the other nine didn't get to experience, right? They get healed of this hourly disease, but they're not made well with God. So what does it even matter? Gratitude helps to restore our relationship with God, right? It, it first helps us to remember that God is good. But when we're going through situations and stuff is hard and we stop and we look at the positive side of things, right, as we, we try our hardest. And sometimes it's hard. I'm not saying that it's wrong to struggle. I'm not saying that it's wrong to have hardships. But, you know, that's, that's life. We will go through hard times. We will experience challenges. And sometimes it's a struggle to be grateful. And that's okay. I don't think God expects us to just happily be grateful all the time. But I do think 
that he, he would love to see us fight to be grateful. And when we do that, it helps us to get to this place with God where we, we recognize that he is good. We recognize that he's the one in control. And we recognize that it's, it's, it's okay for us to put our faith in him. It's okay for us to trust him and that even though everything else around me is falling apart, crashing and burning, God does not change. And that I can, I can still be grateful for him. I can still maintain my relationship with him. I, I think personally, when I lack gratitude for who God is and what he's done, it makes it so much harder for me to want to invest in my relationship with him. When I, when I, when I take my, my focus off of the things that he's done, reading my Bible becomes a chore Prayer becomes another checklist thing because there's no gratitude in my heart. It's just like I do this because I'm supposed to do it or I do this because I know I should do it. And sometimes it it gets to that point, right, where you got to just white knuckle discipline your relationship with God and work and grind. But gratitude helps it to feel less like a chore and more like a joy. And that 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 restores your relationship with God. I'm sure we'll all go through hard patches if you haven't already in your faith, in your relationship with God, where you, you start to question things, right? You start to feel a little bit distant or you start to feel a little bit alienated or estranged from God. That's normal. But gratitude is what helps us to get back to that place. Gratitude is what helps us to get back to that spot of healthiness in our relationship with God. It makes us well in the same way that it made the Samaritan man well. You know, I think about uh, my relationship with my parents. I um, grew up in Texas. I uh, grew up with very, very authoritarian parents. You know, Mindy and Rob uh, did a great job teaching a parenting class last Wednesday. And so, you know, they were going over uh, what it means to be an aggressive parent. And uh, my parents were, were aggressive. And I feel like it, uh, <laughs> I feel like that kind of passed its way down to and, um, you know, obviously my parents aren't perfect, but there's just so many times where my dad just longed for a little bit of gratitude. You know, my, my dad was authoritarian. It's like my way or the highway. But my dad, every now and again, I would catch a glimpse of his heart. You know, I, I would get to see his softer side, but it was very rare. I could probably count on one hand how many times I saw his soft side. I've never seen the man cry, but... Um, you know, I, could, I, could, I, I remember those times where, you know, he would make a comment or say something, and I was like, oh, my dad, my dad really feels hurt by my lack of gratitude. He feels discouraged. And my dad worked hard. You know, he, he, he did a lot to provide for, for, uh, for me and my siblings and my mom. And there were just times where we were ungrateful. And I do think that that hurt my relationship with my dad at certain times. You know, I think it... it, it it, it caused me to not really know his heart. It caused, me not, it, it, it caused me to have a hard time seeing the good that he was doing and appreciating it. And it caused, me to, it, it caused me to have a hard time to feel close to him. And so now, whenever I see my dad, I try to make it a point. I was like, okay, you know, I'm gonna tell my dad I'm grateful for him. Like, you know, tell my dad that I love him. And, uh, you know, my dad actually really said I love you growing up, but he says it a lot more now. I don't know if it's because of his, his old age or whatever, but I, I try to make it a point to express gratitude and love to my dad, and it's helped our relationship. We, we never had this, like, rocky, hard relationship, but I never really felt close to my dad, and I think now, as, as I'm getting older, I, I really do feel like that closeness is developing. And I think me expressing gratitude for all that he's done, and to my mom as well, helps to kind of bridge that gap, and it helps us to feel close together. It's the same way with God. A lack of gratitude separates, right? It, it just causes that separation. It causes uh, just, just distance between us and between God. And so I think we have to really fight to be grateful. And it, we, we fight to be grateful so we can remember how good God is. But we fight to be grateful so that we can also have a close relationship with God. I don't think you can have a close relationship with God if we're ungrateful. It's, it's not possible. Right? What, what brought us to God in the first place? Is it not gratitude for the fact that Jesus died for us? 
right? Is it not gratitude for the fact that God gave up everything for us? Right, I, you know, I study the Bible with a lot of people, and if I were to study with somebody and we do the cross study and they're just like, oh, you know, whatever. Like, okay, but baptize me anyway. I'm like, what? Are you, are you serious right now? Like, no, like it, the, the gratitude for the sacrifice that was made for us, that's, the, that's what should initially bring us to God anyway. Gratitude for what Jesus did. And it doesn't stop there, right? We have to still fight to be grateful every single day in the midst of everything that's going on so that we can have a well relationship with God. In uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, I want to close with this verse. It says, Paul says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. And I love this passage, and I love that last line there. This is, it's God's will for us to be grateful. I don't look at this as it's God's will for us to be grateful, so therefore we better do it, you know, not, not like a command. I think I see it more as it's God's will for us to be grateful in all circumstances so we can do it. Because it's hard. It's, it's hard to be grateful in all circumstances. I think about what some of the, the, the early Christians were going through, the persecution they faced, the hardship they faced. And I think what Paul is saying here is like, hey, this is God's will, so you're capable of being grateful. It's something that you can do. And I think we, we warm God's heart when we're grateful in the good times, but especially when we're grateful in the bad times, when we're grateful in the hard times. A little bit of gratitude goes a long way. What is the deepest root of your joy? Is it what God gives to you, or is it what God is to you? That's John Piper. Convicting question, and it's a question I want to leave you guys with this morning. What makes you more joyful, what God gives to you or what God is to you? I pray that, you know, as we, as we continue to, to push on through this pandemic, as we continue to, to mosey on through life, figuring things out with God, that we can make him our joy and that our, our gratitude can be in him and that we can be grateful in any and every circumstance. So let's be grateful. Let's have a little bit of gratitude. Let's remember how good God is and let's have that restored relationship with God. Amen. 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 Love you guys.